Have you heard the strange tales of the whistler? I know I haven't a chance. I know that I can't live. I can tell the way that a doctor looks at me. And you, too. Why don't you tell me the truth? Why don't you? Friday night, and again, CBS presents The Whistler. I, The Whistler, know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales. Many secrets hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. And so I tell you tonight the unusual story of death in the air. A girl, a rather ordinary brunette of 18, plainly dressed, steps out of an elevator on the 14th floor of a swank apartment house and moves silently down the hall, pauses for a moment before a certain door, then turns the knob and steps inside. A handsome man of 35 jumps to his feet, stares at the girl a moment. Then, as she closes the door behind her... Who are you? What do you want? You don't know me. You've never seen me before. But I know that you're Fred Blake. Yes, I'm Fred Blake. So what? What's the idea of walking into my apartment? I'm Mary Alberti. Mary Alberti? Does that name mean anything to you? Why, lots of people are named Alberti. Yeah. But I'm Mrs. Joe Alberti. Joe... Joe Alberti? Yeah. I thought that name would get a rise out of you. What are you doing here? Do you happen to know where my husband is at this moment? Joe? Why, certainly I know where he is. Who doesn't? This morning he was sentenced. By now he's in the state pen. Convicted of murder. That's right. A murder he didn't commit. He was convicted. He had a trial. But he's innocent. And you know it. He yelled up the bank messenger. He shot him. Then what became of the money? How should I know? Well, I know what became of the money. You have it. How do you figure that? Joe is working for you. As a chauffeur, he said. And I didn't know any different until he got into this jam. I didn't know what you were. Until he told me today. Just before he left. Yeah, and what did he tell you? That you were a gangster. And that he had nothing to do with the holdup or the murder. But that you planted the evidence on him. He was a fall guy. Now, look, sister, I ran a couple of nightclubs and little gambling stuff. But I haven't yet gotten around to holdups and murders. My husband wouldn't lie to me. He begged me to keep quiet about it. Because he was afraid if I made a fuss that you'd get rid of me. What a wild imagination Joe has. Joe told me the truth. Joe wouldn't lie to me. The jury didn't believe his story? He didn't tell him everything. He was afraid. Afraid for me. Will you get out of here or shall I call the police? Nobody knows what became of the 50000 my husband was supposed to have taken. Nobody but me. So? So, since Joe's been convicted, I think I ought to have the use of the money. So fork over, Mr. Blake. Well, of all the brainstorms, you expect me to give you 50000 I do. If Joe grabbed it, it belongs to him. And since Joe's gone, it all becomes mine. Are you nuts? I know you don't carry 50000 around with you, but you can get it tomorrow in cash. So I'll give you till tomorrow at noon to hand it over. That's 12 hours, Mr. Blake. And if I don't? Then I'll kill you. I see. Well, uh, where can I locate you tomorrow by noon? At my hotel. Very well. Just take this notepad and write your name and address. And your phone number. Okay. There. There you are. And bring it in person, Mr. Blake. Oh, of course. I wouldn't want anybody else in on this. And if you don't show up with the money tomorrow, well, I'll catch up with you sooner or later. You'll pay eventually. I know you will. I think I'll run up to the penitentiary and have a talk with Joe. He's all mixed up. He isn't mixed up. Not now. No? No, Mr. Blake. Joe's dead. What? Dead. Killed himself on the way to the pen. He knew he was stuck and he couldn't face it. You did that, Blake. You killed him. So now you're going to pay. Through the nose. Good night, you dirty rat. For ten minutes or so, Fred Blake sits at his desk, thinking studying the peculiar situation. Then there comes a knock at the door. He steps across the room and... Yes, who is it? Oh, Winston. 
What do you want, Carl? I want to talk to you in a minute. Okay, come in. What's on your mind? Well, I I was told you wanted to see me. Yes, Carl, I do. But I, I didn't expect you here at this time of night. What do you want with me? As if you didn't know. What are you going to do about this phony check? Well, I hadn't got the money now, but I'll get it eventually. I've given you a month. Now I want the money. Well, I'll get it. Really, I'll get it. Well, if you can't get it, I can. What do you mean? Your father's district attorney of this county. I'll go to him. He'd pay it to hush it up. Oh, please, Blake. <laughs> or maybe I'd tell your father you ran up a liquor bill. Look, Blake, I haven't got the money, but if you wait, I'll, I'll get it. I've given you all the time I intend to. I want the money now. Put up your hands, Blake. Now, wait a minute. Don't try that bad man stuff on me. Put up that gun before you hurt somebody. Give me that check. Hand it over. Okay, Carl. But you're crazy. Give me that check. Sure. Here you are. Let go. Get away from me. I'll kill you. You crazy little fool. Blake. Blake. For many hours, Blake hovers between life and death. Several times he has revived from the coma sufficiently to answer questions of the detectives. Now, several days later, a week to be exact, the district attorney holds a conference. Tell me, Blake, on the night you were shot, did you see your assailant? No. Do you remember anything that happened? No, I remember the shot. Called a stab of fire in my chest. Came to in a minute or so, I guess. Got to the bone and called the receiving hospital. And I passed out again. And you didn't see the person? No. Blake, do you know a woman named Mary Alberti? Yes. Was she in your rooms the night you were shot? Yes, how did you know? On your date pad, we found her name and address and phone number. What time was she in your apartment? Oh, about 12 o'clock, midnight. And you were shot shortly after midnight? That's right. Do you think she did it? I don't know who did it. That's for you to figure out. What did Mary Alberti want? Why was she in your apartment? Well, her husband Joe was my chauffeur. She wanted some money. She figured I'd help her out. And did you? Well, I told her I'd take care of her later. Did you know Joe Alberti committed suicide? Not until she told me. Did Mary Alberti threaten you because you wouldn't give her some money at the moment? Yeah, she did. Do you think it was Mary who came back later and shot you? I don't know. Could have been. But she did threaten your life. Yes, that's right. Very well, Blake. There are witnesses to this conversation. It'll have to be repeated in court. Okay, Winston. You'll be notified about the trial. Trial? Certainly. I'm going to try Mary Alberti on attempted murder. <laughs> And so Mary Alberti is tried and convicted and sentenced for from five to twenty years. And now, five years, five long years have passed. Fred Blake has become wealthy, the boss of every racket in the county, and District Attorney Winston has been re-elected on a new platform, a vice cleanup campaign. Fred Blake sends for the District Attorney. Come in, Winston. Sit down. Have a cigar? Thanks. What's on your mind, Blake? Well, I wanted to have a little talk with you, Winston, about your campaign. Campaign is over. I've been re-elected. Yeah, but I mean your so-called clean-up campaign. When does that start, Winston? It started the day I was re-elected. I see. My name at the head of your list? I'm starting on you, Blake. And if I put you where you belong, well, that'll be a great accomplishment. I think you're being foolish, Winston. Do you? Why? If you just dropped all this Puritan stuff, I... Well, I could make it more than worth your while. Blake, I was fortunate enough to be born the son of a very wealthy man. And money doesn't interest me in the least. Money? Oh, no, not money. Something that's worth more to you than all the money in the world. Blake, you couldn't bribe me no matter what you offered. Mr. District Attorney, I'm going to change your mind in less than one minute. All right, Blake. I'm listening. Five years ago, you sent a girl to the penitentiary for attempted murder. My murder, remember? Well, you were wrong on that one. She didn't shoot me. What? Then why didn't you say so? <laughs> I was saving it. Saving it for a rainy day. What are you talking about? The Alberti woman didn't do it. She was in my apartment that night, but she left. And a man came in. He owed me some money. He didn't have it. I threatened to tell his father that he had lost at gambling, and he went crazy. Pulled a gun and shot me. Who was this man? 
Your son? Carl. Carl? I don't believe you. Oh, but I can prove it. Look at this. His phony check. That's why he came to my apartment. He demanded the check. We scuffled when he pulled a gun. I hit him, and then he shot me. He left in such a hurry that he forgot the check. I see. But there's something more important than the check. Yes? What? A gun. A revolver. Whose gun? Take a look at it. One shot fired. Recognize that gun? Why, why, yes, it's mine. If ballistics were to check this gun and compare the bullet taken from my chest, they'd find a definite similarity in rifle markings. I see. Well, that's all there is to it. What do you say now, Mr. Winston? You've really got me in a tough spot, haven't you, Blake? If you care anything about your son or his future, you forget this cleanup business. All right, Blake, I, I'll think it over. It's something that can't be decided in a moment. <laughs> Good night, Winston. The cleanup campaign is dropped, and Fred Blake flourishes. He opens more gambling clubs, grows wealthier and wealthier. And a year later, he is a popular figure in the swank set of a southern beach resort. At the moment, Fred is a weekend guest at the beach home of one of the wealthy 400. Oh, what a perfectly divine night. Yes, Anitra, I've never seen such a moon. So peaceful and quiet here on the beach. I didn't want to dance anymore. Well, let's sit down here on these rocks. All right. Anitra. Yes, Fred? What were you going to say? Are you going back to Boston Sunday? Why, I don't know. I haven't decided. I have a few more weeks, but I really should get back. The magazine's so understaffed, and I have a world of illustrations to do. Why do you ask, Fred? Well, I thought if you didn't have to go back, you might come over to my place for a week. Your place? Oh, but Fred, I... Yes, I'm having some guests down for a week. Several couples from New York. Well, I don't know. I really should get back. Please come, Anitra. Please do. Well, it's very sweet Anitra, of you. Anitra, I... I really want you to come. Because... Yes? You know, the way the moon shines on your hair, it, it looks just like spun gold. Does it? Is that what you were going to say? No. There are a lot of things I want to say. Do you realize what a beautiful girl you are, Anita? Oh, I mean it. From the moment I first saw you, you knocked the props right out from under me. Nothing else exists. Nothing else matters. Nothing but you, Anitra. But, Fred, I... I'm wild about you. Crazy. Please, Fred, we better go back. You've got to listen, darling. I love you. Are you asking me to... Yes. I want you to marry me. But I'm a, a career woman. You don't want a career woman for a wife. Besides, we've only known each other for a few days. I don't care, career or not. Two days or two hours. I love you. <laughs> Let's get back to the house. Come on. You mean you... You don't like me? Is that it? Or is it some other man? No, oh, I, I do like you very much, and there's no other man. But, well, I, I'll have to think about it. If I marry, I know I'll give up my work, and I'm not sure I want to do that. I see. Well, will you at least make me happy by joining the party at my place for a week? Yes, I, I'll come, Fred. I'll stay here for another week, but please don't high-pressure me. Let me make up my own mind. Promise? It's a deal. Shall we seal it? <laughs> Certainly. With a kiss? Fred, I... Please. I love you, Anitra. Let's go back to the house, please. But Fred doesn't keep his promise. Fred isn't the type. When he wants a thing, nothing can change his mind. And by the time the week is up, Fred has made up Anitra's mind. They are married and decide to spend their honeymoon in Florida. But a few weeks later, their honeymoon is interrupted. Fred is stricken with an illness. In this room, Dr. Phillips. Oh, thank you. Fred. Fred. Yes, Tommy. This is Dr. Phillips. Yes. Well, Mr. Blake, that seems to be the trouble. I don't know. I'm just... I don't know what it is. Uh, Dr. Phillips is a specialist from Miami. Yes? Suppose you tell me a few things, Mr. Blake. 
Well, I'm afraid it's some sort of paralysis. Paralysis? Yes. What made you think that? Well, the first time it hit me, I got kind of faint. My feet and legs became numb, sort of crept up on me. At first, it wasn't so bad, but the next time it came, it affected my hands and arms, too. I, I got dizzy, and I passed out. Oh, I see. You become nauseated, Mr. Blaine? No. But after the attacks, I'm so exhausted, I, I can't even get out of bed. Hmm. Well, I'd better give you a thorough examination. What? What do you think it is, Doctor? Well, I don't know at the moment. Well, do you think it's serious? Oh, any interruption in the functions may be serious. Do you think it would be best to take him to a hospital, Doctor? I don't know yet. No, no, darling, please. Uh, I'd rather stay here with you. Ah, yes, dear, of course, whatever you say. Uh, please, Mrs. Blake, would you mind stepping out for a while? Oh, very well, I I'll be in my room. Call me when you're finished. Everything's going to be all right, dear. Please don't worry. Yes, I'll be all right. May I come in? Oh, yes. Come in, Mrs. Blake. I've finished. It's been an hour. I just couldn't wait any longer. It's quite all right. How do you feel, Fred? Well, a little better, I guess. He pounded me and thumped and listened, but I don't think he knows himself. I do feel better. I'm going to get up and walk around. Uh, Mr. Blake, I'd advise you to remain as quiet as possible. Why? If you attempt to move about, I'll have to withdraw from this case. What have you discovered? What is it? Uh, just relax. Why don't you say it? Why keep it a secret? I'm entitled to know. Spill it! Now, please, Fred, darling, please don't get excited. But what is it, Doctor? Do you know? Mrs. Blake, I'd like a few words with you. Uh, step over here to the window. Why, yes, of course, Doctor. Well, what are you talking about? Why go over there and mumble? Why don't you say it and be done with it? Did you hear me? What are you mumbling about? What are you telling her, you quack? Why don't you tell me? No, 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 please, Mrs. Blake. Now, please be calm. I, I had to tell you. If you don't tell me what you're talking about, I'll get out of this bed and brain you. Oh, no. Oh, no, please. Darling, please don't get up. No, you mustn't. Now, Mr. Blake, I advise you to stay in that bed and control your temper. You're in no condition to withstand any form of excitement. No? Then you know what's wrong with me? I do. And believe me, if you want to recover, you'd best remain as quiet as possible. It's that serious? You have a chance, Mr. Blake. And that small chance depends mostly upon you yourself. I'll do my best, but it mostly depends on you. Is it Paralysis? The knowledge of what it is will not help you. It is better that you think as little about it as possible. Good night, Mr. Blake. Good night, Mrs. Blake. Anitra, what, what did he say? Oh, Fred. Fred, you must try not... not to... <laughs> Another week passes, and Fred still remains in bed. He has had several more attacks, each one a bit more severe than the last. The doctor has made several visits, and Fred is now terribly frightened by the doctor's concern regarding his progress. Shortly before midnight, Fred feels another spell coming on, a little more severe. Anitra! Anitra! Oh, yes, darling. Yes, Fred? I'm getting fainted. It's coming on again. Get the doctor. Oh, yes, Fred. I've already called him. He'll be here in a few moments. Now, be quiet, dear. Please don't exert yourself. This, this is the worst yet. Please be calm. You're all right. No, no. I'm scared. This is it. I, I know this, this is the end. Oh, Fred. Fred, don't say that. I can tell. No, you've nothing to fear, darling. Nothing. I have. I, I can't help it. I'm afraid. Fred, you must get hold of yourself. You must. I know I haven't a chance. You know that. The doctor knows he told you. I know, too. Oh, please, Fred. There's something I've got to tell. Hush, darling. But you don't understand. I, I, I've i got to tell someone. Oh, you must calm yourself. Well, you've got to listen to me. You've got to. Well, the doctor will be here in just a few moments. Now, please, try to save your strength, darling. He can't help me. Oh, come in. I came as quickly as I could, Mrs. Blake. It's another attack, doctor. It seems to be worse than the last. He's terribly frightened. Well, come now, Blake. You must try to get hold of yourself. Hmm. Well, the pulse is... 
Oh. Pulses. It's what? Uh, just a second. My bag, please. Yes, Doctor. Thank you. Now, let's have a listen to the stethoscope. Mm-hmm. Do you have a chill, Blake? I don't know. I, I'm just awful numb. It's creeping up inch by inch. Oh, please, Doctor. Can't we take him to the hospital? The hospital? I'm afraid that... Well, uh, he's as well off here as in the hospital. Why, why don't you tell me the truth? I've got a right to know. Tell me... Tell me the truth. Uh, now, you're going to be all right, Blake. You're lying. Uh, Mrs. Blake, uh... Yes, Doctor? What did you start to say? Uh, well... Tell me. I, I've got to know. Yes, Fred. Oh, tell us, Doctor. There's no use evading the issue. Fred wants to know. Very well. Since you insist, there is nothing I can do for you, Mr. Blake. Nothing anyone can do for you. You mean it's a matter of days? It may be only a matter of hours. I'm sorry, Blake. Hours. Anitra. Oh, darling, I... I knew. I knew, but I... I just couldn't let you know. Hours. Doctor, will you, will you leave us alone for a while? Of course. Oh, please. Don't leave the house, Doctor. No, I'll stay with you as long as you need me. I'll, uh, I'll be in the hall. You call me if you want. Anitra, get a sheet of paper and write what I tell you. Yes, dear. And please hurry, Anitra. Of course, dear. Yeah. I'm ready. To District Attorney Frank Winston. District Attorney? I never thought I'd do this. But here it is. Joe Alberti was innocent in the killing of the bank messenger. He was framed. I killed the messenger and framed Joe. Fred. And Joe's wife is innocent of trying to kill me. She didn't shoot me. and I, I want it released... I'm enclosing a check for 10000 for her. And furthermore, what I told you about your son was a lie. He didn't shoot me either. He did come to my room. He had a gun. I took it away from him. And in the scuffle, the gun went off. I shot myself. So that, that clears everything up. Now you can start your campaign. But I... I won't be around to participate. Yours, Fred Blake. Fred? Are you out of your mind? What? Well, this is ridiculous. I won't turn this over to the district attorney. I won't. Please, Anitra, please do. I, I can't die. I, I just can't unless I know. Please. You've got to do it. Hand me the pen. I've got to sign it before my hands go numb. Oh, no. No, don't sign it. Please don't. It, it isn't true. It is true. Every word. Hold it. There. Oh, darling. You don't know what a relief this is. All right, Fred. I'll do as you say. Oh, darling, I don't care what you've done. You've been so, so good to me. But if you want me to turn this over, I, I will. I do. Oh, doctor, doctor. Quick, doctor. You're, you're too late, doctor. Uh, everything's okay now. Well... It's all over. All over. I was fortunate in getting a plane within half an hour after you phoned me, Mrs. Blake. I understand, and I appreciate your coming. Well, what is this about Fred Blake? Well, Fred has been ill for several weeks, and last night, well, he got worse, became frightened, and made me take down this letter. He signed it and then... Letter? Yes, you may read it. It's addressed to you. And I promised him I'd see that you got it. I see. District Attorney... To Alberti. And what's this? Carl. Out of all things. I had a hunch this would clear up sooner or later. But how, I hadn't the slightest idea. And here's the check for 10000 to Mary Alberti. 
Will you see that she gets it and is released from prison? Mrs. Blake, Mary Alberti was paroled over a year ago. You keep the check and I'll locate her for you. You can give it to her. Do... Do you know where she can be found? I have a pretty good idea. Now, uh, may I see your husband? I'd like to be sure that he is the Fred Blake. Yes, of course. This way. Yes, he's the real Fred Blake. That's all I wanted to know. Uh, uh, Anitra. Is that you, Anitra? Good Lord, I... Why, I thought he was dead. What is this? Where am I? Blake! Doctor, what happened? I'm not a doctor. Well, then, who are you? I'm District Attorney Winston. Winston? What? What are you doing here? Where am I? You're in your bed, but you're on your way to jail. Jail? Are you crazy? I'm sick. I'm dying. You may be right about that. He isn't dying. It's all in his imagination. Yeah? Get up out of that bed. But I can't. I can't walk. Then we'll carry you. All right, Murphy. Come in and carry him out. Yes, sir. Come on, Jim. We'll make a saddle seat for him. I'm sick, I tell you. I'm dying. You're taking a plane ride north, whether you're dying or not. You signed this confession, didn't you? What? Yes. But you weren't supposed to get that till I was dead. Why didn't you wait, Anitra? Bring him along. You'll never convict me. You'll never get that far because I'll be dead. Come on, boys. Take him to the car. Anitra. Anitra, why don't you tell them? It's all a mistake. They can't do this. Tell him. Tell them what? Well, I'm dying. What can I do, Fred? I did just as you asked me to do. I can't do a thing now. It's too late. What's happened to you? What's happened? Nothing. I've never been so satisfied in my life. What? I said this is the happiest moment of my life. Now, get up, Fred. You can walk. You're stalling. There's nothing wrong with you. You're crazy. No, she's not crazy. She's clever. I've tried for over a year to work this thing out, and she did it all by herself. Yes, Blake, Mary Alberti, now known as Mrs. Anitra Blake, is a very clever woman. Well, there you are. Mary Alberti, alias Anitra Blake, was a clever woman. She knew that her husband, Joe, was innocent. And when she was sent to prison for shooting Fred Blake, she made up her mind to eventually get out on good behavior. So she studied art, glamorized herself, changed her speech and appearance, and worked her way into the circles frequented by Fred. And everything worked out just as she planned. There was nothing wrong with Fred. He wasn't ill and he wasn't dying. Just a few grains of medicine each day was all that was necessary to bring on that numbness. And the doctor? Well, he wasn't a doctor. No, he was really the brother of her husband. The brother of Joe Alberti. CBS has presented The Whistler. Original music for this production was composed by Wilbur Hatch and conducted by Ivan Dittmars. The Whistler is written and directed by J. Donald Wilson and originates from Columbia Square in Hollywood. Next week, same time, I, The Whistler, will return to tell you another unusual story. Good night. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.